thing is, I know we're covering this serious topic, right? But just because it's a serious topic doesn't mean that we have to become like super serious about it. Because this is a topic that you hear people talk about. There's memes on it. There's so many things that people do um, in relation to, man, that you're just a hater. You're drinking the haterade, right? And we make it, sometimes we, we forget that this isn't a new concept or thing. The Bible talks about this quite a bit. And what I'm going to try to do is make sure that you have like, that I want you to grasp that there's levels to this thing. There is levels to the hate. There is levels and there is something they're hating, right? Um, most people, um, when they start, right, when they start to hate on you, it starts at level one. This is really private, right? This is where they are starting to hate on you, but they're hating on you in a way where it's just between them and their own heart. There's something in your life that when they look at it, it makes them not feel so good about their own life. And so what they end up doing is instead of just sitting by and saying, ah, oh, it doesn't matter, what they end up doing instead is they end up saying, I don't think I like this person. And that next level is where it goes from refusing at, at the heart level to where now they're refusing much more publicly, right? And the way they're doing this publicly is they are doing this where they refuse to celebrate in the presence of others. Like everybody else is all excited. Like look at this girl, right? Everybody else is all excited. You got engaged. And you have this one person sitting there like, mm, I don't know, whatever. She can have her life, I'm gonna have my life. I don't care about all that. Does that make sense? We're gonna leave the refusal to celebrate category, that level one, to now where low key in level two, guess what these folks are gonna do? These folks, these are the folks who actually challenge the legitimacy. They challenge the legitimacy of what you are doing. They challenge if you really should have won. Was the competition fair? Oh, you're not even that pretty. You're not even that strong. You're not that smart. Your business skills on all that. Your sermons are okay. Your ministry is average. Your car is all right. Your kid ain't that smart. That school ain't that awesome. That graduation means nothing. That promotion, anybody could have gotten it. What are they doing? They are, they are challenging the legitimacy of your success. They're challenging the legitimacy of your gift. This is dangerous. Let me break it down for you why. Jesus was brought into the desert by the Holy Spirit. When he was in the desert, the enemy came to challenge him. And the first thing the enemy challenges him was he challenged him on something he was born with. He challenged him on if. He said if statements. The if statements is challenge words, right? It, it, for hater, for haterations, right? The people who are haters, when they say if, I need you to know they're at level two. I, just so you can kind of grasp this and, and connect the dots. When somebody comes to you and they're talking about your gift, your skill, or your accomplishments, and they start using if words, they're at level two, my friend. They might be low key level two, or they might be high, hot on fire level two, but either way, they are level two, right? This is when they are actually going to start to put you on blast in the most public way possible. This is when they are in no way, shape or form hiding it. They're going all out there and that's when they're making comments and you're like, where did this come from? If they were a friend, you're like, I thought we were closer than this. If it was a coworker, you're gonna be like, I thought we were okay. I mean, I didn't think we were best friends, but I ain't think you had this kind of like hate in you because they're now challenging your accomplishments at work, at school, at home with your friends. They're challenging your relationship. Told you there's levels to this, right? So level three, here's what level three really is. With level three, this is when they escalate 
to where these folks are going to straight up fight against you. Stra- I mean, this is... Now, again, it starts off low-key, right? They're not fighting against you at first in your face. But these are the folks who fight against you. Like, they're the ones who are just like, okay, you know what? Um, they'll go tell your boss something about you that makes people make your boss look at you differently. They'll tell coworkers something about you that make your coworkers look at you differently. They'll send your spouse a message saying, man, I don't know if you should trust this person or not, right? And the reason I'm saying all that to you is that they're the ones who are constantly questioning who you are and what you do and how, what you bring to the table. But it escalates quick. And when it escalates, they go from being doing like doing it behind your back constantly to where they're now like, listen, I am all out against you. Not only is everything on the table, they're the ones who can't stand you so much that they, if they're around you, it might get violent because they're, they have so much animosity in their heart about your success in every aspect of life. They started off level one where it was just they're not going to celebrate you right they went to level two where they're like uh, you know they're they're going to challenge if you're legitimate to now they're a hardcore against you and this is where people will kill your character kill you kill your your history your legacy they want to destroy it all haters are gonna hate This is the reality, my friends. Haters are gonna hate. There is no mistake in this. There's no denying this. There's no fighting against this. Haters are gonna hate. They're gonna hate you for your gift, which comes from birth. They're gonna hate you for your skill, which is a byproduct of your hard work. They're even gonna hate you for your accomplishments. This life, your life goals, not even if it's not their life goals. You know what Jesus said? He did us a favor. He says, I will show you how to respond. I will give you the kingdom of God recipe for how to respond when somebody hates on you. So here is what Jesus says. We start off in the book of Matthew. Matthew 5, 44. Jesus says, but I tell you, love who? Love your enemies. Bless who? Bless those who curse you. And this is specifically to your haters. Do good to those who hate you. Did you catch that? Do good to... You go, wait, what? Yes, yes, Jesus said that. Jesus says, they are not doing good to you. They're at level one, level two, or level three in hate. Right? They are not doing right by you. But he says the actions you should take towards the person hating on you is to what? Do good to those who hate on you. Do, do, you, you are seeing that, right? Do good. It's see, I told you, it's not going to be a problem of do you understand it, do you see it, or does it make sense to you? The real challenge is, will you surrender to that? Haters are going to hate. Don't take it so seriously. Don't let it get into your heart. Don't let it transform you. Don't let it mess with you in such a way that you can't be who God wants you to be because their hate is now starting to negatively impact you. Keep it loose. Let it just roll off you. I'm not saying it doesn't matter. I'm not saying it's fair. I'm not saying it's right. But let it roll off you so you can do good for them. Let it roll off you so you can pray for them so that they won't have the power. And this is my last thought before I pray with you. The one of the most profound things that God shared with me that helped me in this journey, I'm going to share with you now. My wife should have more power over my day than my haters. If my haters can cause me to have a bad day and I go home and I see my wife and I am still in a bad place, then my haters have moved to a place of greater importance in my heart than my wife. 
How important have you made your haters? Make them comical. Make them a laugh and laugh to you. Make them something light. Not that the things they're doing against you is light, but don't let it get to you in the heart area. And if this is where you struggle, I want to pray with you right now. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I pray right now that you will help us to make light of the hate that comes our way. That we won't carry it around like it's a burden, like, like it's attack, like, like it's judgment, like it's scars and wounds that we should carry all of our lives. The haters told us we didn't look good in certain clothes, told us our, our eyes, our neck, our hair, our body, our skills, our talents weren't good enough, weren't nice, weren't at the right level. And when we were young, we might have believed them, God, and we might be carrying around the, the haters from our childhood with us today. We might be carrying around the haters in our work or in our schools back home with us each day. Help us to be free of the hate, God, and the influence it has on us so that we can only let who you say we are, the gifts you've given us, the work and skill we've put in, the accomplishments you've blessed us with. Let those things be the biggest things in our hearts and our lives, and not the haters. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this week. If you haven't already liked our page, please do. We're also going to start promoting a lot of stuff on our, faith, on our YouTube page. So you're going to see much more to come on that. Thank you again for joining us. Be blessed. Be encouraged. Let God just do great things in your life.